the biggest stereotype is people think that I get paid a lot to do this. The short answer is no. I'm volunteering my time and working on this for free. So, tell us more about the work of IPCC and what kind of work do you exactly do as the co-chair of the working group too? Uh, the IPCC is the authoritative UN body that looks, reviews, assesses all we know about climate science, what it does for impacts, and more importantly, what we can do about it. It is um, it's so important for many countries that, for instance, don't have the scientific bandwidth or capacity to do research. Governments, school children, uh, university students, um, every sector of every country in, in places where there is a deficit of knowledge, they rely on these reports. And I'm leading the group looking into climate impacts, adaptation and vulnerability, very relevant to places in Singapore, Southeast Asia, and in Greater Asia. Me and my team of about 30 other elected uh, scientists, we have to persuade the world's best scientists in climate, you know, climate research, environmental research, on every aspect related to climate change, to come and work for us and come and write uh, an important report and volunteer the time to do so which uh, is rather interesting because when I tell people, the biggest stereotype is people think that I get paid a lot to do this. The short answer is no. I'm volunteering my time and working on this for free. And the reason for that is I tell my students, look, if I were to offer my services, make a guess which would be the first industry that will come and knock on my door and ask me for my services. Uh, oil and gas would be the first one. So that's among other things. So I have to remain objective. And that's part of the challenge of the IPCC. You can trust that the reports are free from influence, no COI, free of bias. And it, it therefore is, um, it has that authoritative sense that people can rely on that for the right climate action to follow up on. It involves a lot of late night meetings. It's a lot, it involves a lot of reading of literature. You need to have that people person touch. You need to tell people, look, this is what matters. This is why you are sacrificing your time, your effort, late nights, early mornings, uh, endless amount of Zoom meetings to get people on the same page to realize that this work matters. Sounds like you need to be a climate scientist and a politician at the same time. Diplomat. Yeah. Diplomat. Diplomat. Okay. But in terms of the interest across the group, right? I mean, you deal with developing countries, developed countries, their interests can be very diverse. How do you actually get anybody to agree on anything? A lot of patience, a lot of time realizing that they, are, they may be stubborn, they, 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 they don't want to uh, give way or yield, but sometimes it's as easy as having copy with them, learning what makes them tick. So part of my job is not just dealing with scientists, but also with governments and these governments may have a certain entrenched national view that they can't uh, yield too much from. And a lot of time is spent, um, I would say being like an RM, going up to them and saying, look, what, it, what makes you tick? What makes it important for you? I'll see if there are ways that we can um, work together. Like say, this is what the scientists, this is what the science says that what can work can be done at scale. Maybe it's better for you to work in a bilateral situation and then get your regional partners to come and work on that. So. That, that sort of skill in learning the, the, the context of what makes these countries and people tick is something that I've learned. It, it, it's a challenge for me to try and get done in my current job.